How you doing? This is Matthew Robert Payne and this is uh, a video called My Experience with Angels My Experiences with Angels Part 3 and this will be on part of a playlist so you'll be able to look up that playlist um, Okay, so this next section uh, this uh, uh, video is going to be uh, on the subject of protection uh, how have I interacted with angels when they've come in the form of protection for my life? So we know that uh, one of the ministries of angels is protection and uh, they can turn up uh, when we need protecting and uh, these stories uh, demonstrate that, uh, that uh, part. So one time I was uh, giving a uh, homeless person a meal in McDonald's and I'd gone up we'd eaten our meal and I'd gone up uh, to get him a coffee after his meal and uh, as I came back I saw something fly through the air towards the homeless man uh, it came from uh, two youth that were there and I said to the homeless man did they throw something at you and he said don't worry about it I said no, I'm going to worry about it. What did they throw at you? And he said, a napkin. And um, I got up and uh, addressed the two youth and uh, or young uh, guys. And uh, I said, did you throw something at him? And uh, they got up and stood up and said to me, you want to go outside? You want to make something of it? And initially I had fear because uh, I'm not a fighter and uh, they were quite scary and um, then, uh, then faith rose up in me and I got bold and I said we can go outside but if you see uh, if, if uh, two, two people that you can't see start hitting you and uh, punching you and uh, the punches aren't coming from me but from something you can't see uh, just know that you're warned that they were my angels protecting me and um, both the guys uh, went white as a ghost with fear and uh, started uh, stuttering please uh, leave us alone uh, we're sorry and I said, tell the homeless man you're sorry. And they shouted out to the homeless man, they were sorry, please forgive them. They're sorry what they did. And, um, and uh, they sat down and they said, uh, we don't want any trouble, please leave us alone. And um, I was really shocked by that. And um, years later, in a conversation with the Lord, I asked about these occurrences, uh, this one and another one that I'm about to share. And the Lord said that even though I couldn't see the angels, um, when I said uh, to, pe to people that you can't see will start to hit them, they've seen uh, two angels, six foot seven, um, and about four foot across in the chest, uh, wider than that with big arms like this. Uh, they're normally dressed in, in leather, uh, with uh, showing all their biceps like leather vests. And um, they, then they, um, they, they appeared to these guys and were basically saying, we're going to punch you out. Um, and uh, that's what the guys saw. And um, they uh, went white as a ghost and were full of fear. So uh, we often hear of stories, if you follow angel stories, uh, that people have written in books that, uh, you know, people have backed off and been scared uh, of people. But the people actually that are getting protected don't actually see the angels. It's uh, when they hear the accounts of the other people, they said, who were those uh, big men that were with you and uh, they find out third hand, second hand that, um, that uh, they had angels with them. All they did was pray. So I spoke out boldly and, uh, and that happened. Um, I, I um, spoke out by faith. There's another time I was with, the second story I've got, I was with uh, uh, indigenous um, New Zealand person which uh, we call a Maori and uh, he'd uh, been drinking too much and he was drunk and we came out to the front of a hotel or a pub and uh, we, um, we 
were coming by and the bouncer went to pick on him, the person, the security at the front of the hotel uh, started to pick on him and I said, he's with me, so if you're picking on anyone, you pick on me. And the bouncer was getting ready to hit me and uh, I, I felt uh, confidence rise up in me and I said to him, I said, turn around and he turned around and I said, see that light pole up there, that, that, uh, that light pole up there? And he said, yeah. And I said, that's where you're going to land. If you hit me, something you can't see is going to hit you and that's where you're going to land. And I said it really forcefully and he went white as a ghost, full of fear too. And uh, he said, uh, please uh, leave, uh, I, I don't want to cause any trouble, uh, uh, you know, I'm sorry, um, please leave. And uh, he had a stuttering, fearful speech too. And uh, once again, um, I'd, encountered, I'd encountered those two guys the first time, and this was the second time I saw someone who wanted to be violent with me uh, go to water and uh, become fearful. And um, so... Um, once again, uh, an angel manifested next to me, and they don't directly look at the angel. They look at you, but they go full of fear. They can see the angel next to you, but they keep addressing you with their eyes. Um, so um, that was the second occasion, and uh, that protected me and my friend. Um, and uh, so the third story that I want to share in this uh, video is one time I was at this church and um, and I, I had a couple of people that were with me I had like a band of disciples I had about four people with me and uh, I went to this uh, healers church that was gifted in the gift of healing and um, we went up the front for prayer and uh, the guy next to me uh, one of my friends uh, he said he had a, a like a pain in his leg and the healer was busy praying for someone else and so I asked Jesus what do I do and uh, Jesus said just lay your hand on his leg and say I rebuke you Jezebel so so I laid my hand on his leg and I said I rebuke you Jezebel as soon as I did that one of the women in the room uh, like levitated she rose from the ground she was on the ground from um, prayer she rose from the ground and went about um, that foot that high off the ground across the ground for about five feet screaming at the top of her lungs and uh, that got the healer's attention and he uh, he knew that it came from me uh, but he did nothing about it and uh, they had coffee afterwards and uh, we left early because I was afraid that she was going to cause some trouble uh, because uh, normally when a Jezebel um, gets uh, identified they cause you trouble I just had a spiritual sense that something was wrong and uh, and was going to be trouble and I led the guys away from the train station that we catch a train in the town I led them into another street and I felt spiritually that there was a spiritual hunt that was going on and uh, uh, sometimes in witchcraft circles they can call on everyone uh, with a wrong spirit and they can tell those people what the people look like that uh, the hunt is about and to go and do them physical damage and um, I'd been in one of them before and uh, and experienced it and one of these uh, spiritually I was aware that that was happening and um, I told the guys about it and uh, told them that uh, that it was happening and one of the guys uh, started to moan he started to cry almost and uh, I told him to be quiet or you know please be quiet um, I'm not sure you know I'm sure that angels can come and stop us um, from being seen but I'm not sure we can block out your sound and he kept on moaning I said you know I'm gonna hit you and knock you out you know um, and I thought of running away from him leaving him behind and letting him get beaten up um, but whilst I was trying to work that out uh, 
a woman came out of a second story apartment uh, above us and took her, her top off so she was naked uh, showing her breasts and uh, to four Christ, you know, four young men that was a good sight and certainly something that would keep them there. I knew that spiritually now that they knew our location and I knew it was just a matter of minutes before uh, you know uh, violent people arrived and I, I didn't know how I didn't know uh, if angels could baffle the sound of uh, my friend crying and um, so I was very annoyed with him and I had at that point I hadn't seen angels before, uh, but I was aware they were there, and uh, so I um, I asked uh, another guy who'd been at my house and seen angels in my house. Um, I asked the Lord to open his eyes to see the angels around us, and he said the whole street is full of angels. He he said in in fact that cloud up there isn't a cloud; it's an army of angels waiting uh, to help. And uh, he said, well, well, right. And uh, I said, so we can walk out of here? He said, yeah. And my friend was still moaning. He didn't believe that. You know, my friend's got a spirit of witchcraft too. And um, he didn't believe that testimony that uh, we were safe. He was still moaning. And I was pushed to the extreme. So uh, Jesus uh, is in charge of a lot of things, but Michael's in charge of the army of the Lord. And uh, so I was pushed and I, I said, Michael, come here. And uh, the guy that could see started screaming at the top of his lungs and uh, he fell to his knees and uh, saw something in front of him and he was screaming, you know. If I was worried about my friends whimpering, um, I certainly uh, would have been surprised, you, you know. Um, certainly they must be able to baffle sound because his screaming was amazingly. It's... Uh, a proper account of uh, what people normally say when they meet angels, they're full of fear. And he fell to his knees and I said, can you ask the angel in front of you if his name is Michael the Archangel? And, and uh, my friend said, yes, uh, you already know that. And uh, I said, um, can you ask him if it's safe for us to walk out of here and no one can see us uh, that's coming for us? And um, and uh, the guy said, yes, Michael says it's safe. Uh, the angels will protect you. You can walk to the station now and everything's going to be okay. So, um, so uh, I um, got the guys together and I said thank you. And um, we started walking. Uh, I felt uh, Jesus uh, come and stand beside me and walk beside us. And... Um, I was really thankful for the guy who'd saved the day. The, the guy that was whimpering had stopped whimpering because he saw the guy scream so much uh, and he was uh, proven beyond doubt that there was an actual angel there uh, and uh, he, he knew and so his fear had gone. And uh, I was so happy about the guy who'd helped us, who had the spiritual sight. Um, so I asked Jesus, I asked him if he'd like to meet Jesus, and he said yes. And I said, just stand here. And uh, he stood on the side of the road, and I said, Jesus, can you appear to him? And uh, Jesus said, fine. And uh, we saw him uh, standing there, and then he dropped to his knees, and he was just talking into uh, thin air. And uh, he, for about five minutes he was talking and then he got up and he was had tears in his eyes and he told us that was the most awesome experience he'd ever had in his life and he was so amazed. So the angels stayed with us all the way into town and, uh, and there would have been uh, witchcraft and uh, people coming to look for us but they would have driven down the road and like Jesus disappeared into the crowd uh, the angels uh, block uh, what you can see they, they block um, and, and people can't see you um, so um, another occasion that angels protected me um, I was um, uh, I uh, became homeless uh, in the uh, infamous, infamous uh, uh, red light district of Australia called King's Cross and um, I used to um, go in there and minister to the prostitutes in this uh, strip, uh, strip joint brothel 
um, and uh, I used to take them chocolates and minister to them and the leadership of that uh, King's Cross uh, uh, brothel used to let me in there and um, I, I, a friend of mine said that they would have thought you were um, you know a federal policeman and uh, that's why they never hurt you um, but uh, one day I went in there homeless and uh, one of the girls in the brothel let me sleep in a room so it became uh, obvious that um, to the owners of that um, brothel that um, that I wasn't a federal policeman because a federal policeman wouldn't do that. And um, so the next day they arranged uh, some guys to get angry at me, and uh, and I um, I went off to another uh, brothel, to uh, strip joint brothel, uh, to have a few drinks and. Um, um, one of the bouncer that got angry at me came up to the club and said he wants to have a talk with me. Do you, do you want to go for a walk? And he said, I'm not going to hurt you. And I said, fine. We went for a walk and we went round uh, behind uh, the club, the original club. And before I know it, there were three guys there. And um, he said, I'm just going to ring on the phone and hear what uh, you said to my owner about me. As soon as he said that, the three guys started to hit me and I was soon on the ground and uh, you see on TV, you've seen on video, uh, three guys kicking into another guy. Well, they started to kick into me and uh, I was on the ground and I was saying sorry to the bouncer, uh, apologising to the bouncer, saying sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. And uh, they were kicking me and I was apologising. Then I heard Jesus say to me, are you finished apologising? And and I said, yeah. He said, uh, they've got a baseball bat there uh, next to the dumpster and when you're unconscious from the kicking, they're going to um, kill you. Um, so are you ready to uh, get up and run? And I said, yeah. And uh, I got up and um, uh, ran from there to the police station and uh, the police took me into the brothel and got my bag, took me into the city uh, away from that, I uh, often I, I asked Jesus after that account what happened, and he said uh, when you got up, uh, angels um, held the guy's arms that were hitting you so they couldn't um, uh, they couldn't grab you when you got up. It's impossible for a guy to get up uh, when three guys are around him kicking him. It's impossible for him to get away. Um, but I got away and um, I only got a bruised rib out of that. Um, they had boots and they were prepared and they had steel cap boots and they were prepared for, for what they did and they were well used to killing people because they had killed a lot of people before. And um, I was told by Jesus that two angels had laid either side of me and, and copped the beating of the kicking and uh, shielded me from, from the actual blows of the kicks. So um, that was a real uh, intervention by angels. Um, later on, uh, police asked me about the club and asked me if they were dealing drugs and I said, of course they are and you know it full well. And um, I was talking to the owner of the club about six weeks later and he said it's dangerous for you to be in King's Cross we kill people here and I said well you tried to kill me once and and I'll take my chances and Jesus told me to continue uh, uh, in the suburb continue visiting the suburb until he says not to and uh, not to fear man but uh, to fear him and uh, I continued in the suburb I even went into the club a couple of times when Jesus told me to go into the club and all the people in the club were stunned that I'd returned to the club because I'd, they all knew they'd tried to kill me and um, it was just a testimony to Jesus and a year later at New Year's Eve um, the actual bouncer uh, denied all through the year he denied that anything had happened between us but um, uh, on New Year's Eve everyone was going around hugging each other and uh, shaking each other's hands and wishing each other well and the bouncer came up to me and we hugged each other and um, and we said all is well and um, Jesus told me that night that, that I could leave King's Cross and not visit anymore. He just wanted to restore that relationship with the bouncer and I'd been a good witness to the prostitutes and been a shining light for Jesus uh, in the club.
And uh, so um, he wanted me to restore my relationship with the bouncer. He didn't want the bouncer to know that I was scared of anything, that I stood up for my Jesus. So, so uh, one time I used to uh, go into King's Cross uh, uh, five, six nights a week and stay up all night and, uh, and uh, drink in the club um, Coca-Cola and... Um, and uh, witness to the prostitutes and just be their friends. And one day I was uh, going to do an intervention in one of the prostitutes' life. It, it reached a stage where I thought she was ready uh, to uh, come out of her lifestyle and I was going to uh, bring her home and um, let her dry out from heroin use. And I was walking up the road towards King's Cross and a known uh, person with a Jezebel spirit was across the road uh, that I knew had a Jezebel spirit. And she was watching me walking up the road and I said, she's going to spoil what I'm doing. And Jesus said to me, she can't see you. And I argued with Jesus. I said, she, her eyes are following me. She's watching me walk up the road. What do you mean she can't see me? And Jesus said, she's watching four anointed angels walk up the road. And what she can see is four men walking up the road. And she knows they're anointed and she's attracted to them. But she can't see you. You're in the middle of them and she can't see you. And um, so that was another time where I seen a, an enemy of mine, someone that would cause me trouble, um, uh, watching me and uh, I was uh, disappeared from plain sight uh, from her and so when um, Jesus wants you to disappear he can just bring angels around you and you can uh, become invisible um, to a person looking on and the angels become visible so that was the way Jesus used to disappear uh, in a crowd a, a number of angels used to come around him he'd disappear and the angels would uh, walk, walk him out of there. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my experiences with angels part three and uh, I hope you enjoy part four and uh, I hope uh, you can write to me and give me feedback.